Can you tell us uh, a little about Dr. Tomei's role with Michael? He was, uh, is he still dealing in Michael's businesses? Um, it seems that he still has presence with everything, including in the movie. Is he totally out? Or He's not in the movie. How's he in the movie? Uh, when they arrived in London. Was he in there? Yeah. I didn't even see that. Yeah. Really? Well, here's what happened. Somebody, uh, Michael told me when I got here, I need a doctor when I would go to London. We have to hire a doctor. I said, okay, what for? No, we're talking about Dr. Tomei, not the doctor. No, no, we're okay. talking about Dr. Tomei. We're talking about yeah. a doctor. Okay. I didn't know it was Murray at the time. He said, uh, I said, what do you need a doctor for? He said, well, he said, Frank, I'm the show. If I get sick or if I, you know, I get a fever, we got to have a doctor to make sure that I eat right, that I have the right fluids. I said, okay. I, I said, I get that part. So, you know, a couple months go by. I don't know this doctor. Is it? But he is a doctor that he met in Vegas that he, I think, according to what I heard, Michael called him to, when one of the kids had a cold or weren't feeling well. And that's how he met him, and then whatever friendship they had, they had. So then we hear back that uh, Doc, uh, no, so, uh, I'm sorry. So then as we get closer to leaving, Michael says, have you found a doctor yet? I said, no, we're, I said, you know, Michael, I, I think we're going to get a doctor when we go to London. I'll find you going to go a week in advance. No, I have to have my own doctor. I said, well, tell you the truth, I didn't know you had a doctor. Who's your doctor? He said, Dr. Murray. I said, well, you have to give me his number. So I got his number. Now, Dr. Murray won an exorbitant amount of money to close up his practices, go to London and live there for eight months with his family and everybody. So he mentioned the number to one of the people negotiating with them. And I said, well, we're never paying that. And I went into Michael and said, this is what he asked for. He said, you're kidding. I said, for that figure, I'll get on a plane tonight. I'll fly to London. I'm going to buy you a hospital. <laughs> he started laughing. <laughs> he said, well, that's ridiculous. Figure out a common ground somewhere. So we negotiated, and we got him down. And he wanted a certain number, and I yelled, no, this is what the artist wants to pay, 150 And he accepted it. Now, the contract, he never got paid any money because Michael passed away. This was in the last two weeks of Michael's life. His lawyer was negotiating terms with, you know, the AEG's lawyer because AEG was fronting the money. Mm. AEG didn't hire the guy. They didn't know him from, you know, cat food. He never received one payment because he didn't sign the contract and Michael never signed the contract. So he never got any money. Now, how did, how did I meet him? This is how I met him. And Randy Phillips met him. And uh, Kenny Ortega met him and everybody else. One of the people that worked for us, I don't want to say who she is, said, gee, I think Michael's, you know, losing weight, this and that. I said, let me handle it. Let me get, let me investigate it. Went to Michael, talked to him about it. He said, No, I'm fine. I'm, you know, drinking beet juice every day, and eating oatmeal, and all this stuff. I said, Okay. I said, Well, we should meet with this doctor. Give me his number. That was the first time we got his number. Called the doctor, set up a meeting at Michael's house. We all went. Doctor, and Michael was there. What is going on? Or, or is he getting the right vitamins? Is he losing weight? Is he? No, he said, he's 140 pounds. He's fine. He said, he's eating this, he's eating that, and Michael's agreeing. Okay? And I said to him, kidding around, by the way, what kind of doctor are you? He says, well, I'm a cardiologist. I said, a heart doctor? He said, yeah. Oh, great. I said, Mike, this is terrific. I've had three heart attacks. I need you on the scene. <laughs> you know, which Michael was a, didn't realize I had three heart attacks. And the doctor started laughing, and you know, but he assured everybody in that room that 
but Michael was in good shape. He was working out every day with uh, Lou Ferrigno, and, and Travis would come over and do the workouts at the house. There was no sense of Michael going to the studio to do the things he could do at home and spend that time with his children. We didn't need him to show up at Staples Center anywhere between four to six. And that's the way we made that schedule. And that was approved by everybody in that room that day. I went back to that person, said I had a meeting, repeated what the doctor told to me. And, and he, the doctor said it to all of us very convincingly. And Michael emphasized, I'm fine. Stop worrying. I'm not losing you know, that much weight. I have to be a certain weight, and I want a certain look to dance. Well, what are you supposed to do? You know, if he says it and the doctor says it, you know, what am I supposed to stand up and say, well, I still don't believe you? The day, June 25th, when you got the call, where were you and what went through you?